much. I, I hope uh, we're able to do it justice today. Thanks, guys. Read the word. Yes, that's all it takes. Just read the words. That's all it is. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Buenas, buenas tardes. Welcome back. Um, I hope you had a, a nice little break and you got a chance to talk to everybody and mingle a little bit. Um, so, I'm here to uh, welcome us back uh, and introduce uh, our next event. So, we're going to get started right now with uh, a stage reading of Escobar's Hippo by Frankie Gonzalez, directed by Sorani Gutierrez. Uh, and let me just say that I had uh, the privilege of reading this script. Uh, and I just laughed so hard when I was reading it. I even cried uh, when I read it. So I'm very, very excited to see it. Uh, and um, yeah, without further ado, let's enjoy. Escobar's Hippo by Frankie D. Gonzalez. Scene one, un hippo con leche. At rise, a cafe in a Colombian town along the Magdalena River, hot, oppressive, always humid, overcast. Juan sits sipping a cafe con leche, looking over a script. He's dressed casually in a light button up and shorts. Dalia, the waitress, dressed in jeans and a t-shirt, enters with some arepas and butter and sets them on the table. Thank you. Mm, I'm inside if you need anything, okay? Dalia exits. Juan checks his watch and thumbs through the script. A loud grunt from off stage. Juan looks around to see where the noise came from. Bernardo enters, disheveled, pants frayed, his shirt colors faded, hair unkempt. Siete. I know, I'm late. Let's not linger on this. Seven. Seven times. I know, I know what you're doing. Not playing along. Ah, whatever. You're abusing my friendship, you know. Eh. And you're being over dramatic. You asked me. No, no, no. You begged me to read your script and show up here in the morning to discuss it. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I had you wake up early to spend the day with your friend to talk about literature. Oh. Oh, how you suffer such indignity. <laughs> You're over 30 minutes late for this meeting that you called the most important meeting of our lives. It, and it is. It is. It is the most important meeting of our lifetimes. I'm just, I'm just helping you build anticipation and gather your thoughts. Oh, yeah. Cut the bullshit, Bernardo. 
You just admit that. Just admit it and take responsibility like a man. Fine, fine. I was late. I was late because of who I am as a human being. I cannot get my shit together. And you won. You, you are the superior human being. At last, we agree on something. <laughs> Can we get started on it, please? Oh, by all means. Yes? Mm. Well, Apple, do you want to get some coffee first? Oh, fuck you. What? That's a reasonable question. After all, we are at a cafe. I'll pass on the coffee. Why? They burnt their coffee here. <laughs> okay. There are literally five cafes closer to where I live. And you had me come to this place 45 minutes away? Well, you don't even like the coffee here? The atmosphere is nice. <laughs> atmosphere is not worth 45 minutes, okay? But good coffee is? Yes! Yes, you idiot! I, I can understand a commute for the, the best coffee that you've ever had. But I cannot, absolutely cannot justify it for atmosphere. <laughs> It's a charming cafe. Burnt coffee notwithstanding, this is a lovely establishment with, uh, with character. Why are we here? I told you. Bullshit. The bullshit, bullshit! Why are we here? Um, is everything okay? <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yes, everything is okay. Just talking to my friend, you know? Favorite customer, it's been a while. Where have you been? Uh, oh my god. Oh, you know, uh, just been at home writing uh writing my new play. Juan here is a big fan. Uh, <laughs> he just had to meet me after reading it. Oh, you were playwright. Wow, so what's your play about? It's uh Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, you know, it's uh it's a romantic drama. Uh, I'm trying to find the lead actress. Do uh, you know anyone? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, no. I mean, I, I don't know any actors, so. Well, what about you? You ever consider being an actress? Wow. Oh, God. It's Dahlia's worst nightmare. That customer. But Dahlia plays it off with a little laugh. <laughs> Stop teasing me. <laughs> no, no. I'm serious. Oh, yeah. Of course you are. Maybe you and I can... Uh, Meet up some time and see if there's chemistry there. <laughs> a series of very loud and close grunts and snorts interrupts Bernardo's really bad seduction. What the hell was that? Nalia goes to investigate and get away from Bernardo. Juan is staring daggers into Bernardo. Um, so, uh, what did you, uh, what did you think of the script? <laughs> The script is stupid, okay? It, it, it's trite, it, it's, it's derivative garbage. Whoever told you that you should be a writer should be executed by hanging. Nah, 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 by firing squad. No, guillotine. No, burnt alive with your garbage script fueling the flames. Wow, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and if you ever Fucking waste my time ever again with your fucking script and your burnt ass cafe and overpriced arepas. I will personally make sure that you never. <laughs> Dana rushes back in behind her. This is Escobar's hippo. It is mighty, it is massive, it is monstrous. Juan jumps out of his seat and sits in shock and backs away while Bernardo sits frozen in his chair. What the fuck is that thing? Hey, 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 go away! Go, go away! Juan throws an arepa at Escobar's hippo. This greatly offends the hippo. That's a fucking hippo! Jesus Christ! That's a fucking hippo! Es 
Escobar se po exits. <laughs> Scene two, the hippopotamus in the room. <laughs> An assembly hall. A chorus of townspeople mill about getting into their seats and talking. Okay, so we need to talk about the seriousness. Okay, so I thought this was for the uh, meditation classes. I saw footprints heading in the direction of the store. Do hippos have paws? Does that matter? It matters tremendously. It, if we can't properly identify what kind of tracks it leaves, how can we be sure that we're tracking the hippo and not some other creature? Are there other creatures? What would you call them? I would say they're more like hooves. Hippos don't have hooves. How do you know? We're losing the subject. Are there other creatures besides the hippo in the town? What makes you think there are other creatures? Uh, if you ask me, they have feet. Nonsense. As opposed to hooves? Are there other creatures we need to prepare for or not? I think hippos have webbed toes. Does, does that mean they have claws? Claws? Bernardo, Juan, and Dalia enter. They take their seats near the back and watch the chaos unfold. Uh, so you're basically implying that a hippo is closer anatomically to a duck than a rhinoceros? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Ducks have claws? I thought they had webbed toes. I think you can have both. What the hell are you talking about? No. I've always wondered if the difference between a hippo and a rhino is that hippos swim while rhinos stay on land. Otherwise, they're the same creature, like frogs and toads. Hippos and rhinos are not like frogs and toads. A plague of frogs and toads? Rhinos? Is this a zoological invasion? Wait, I thought we were here to debate the merits of opening the assembly hall, the weekly meditation classes. That was rescheduled. Then what are we doing here? We're here to discuss the hippo. And the rhinos, the toads, the ducks, and the frogs. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm sorry, what? No. Just the hippo. Well, however many animals, we need to deal with it. Deal with what? The hippo. I thought we were talking theoretically. There's an actual hippo? <laughs> what is happening? I, I have no idea. <laughs> the entire assembly hall shakes. What? The rhino! No, there is no rhino! How do you know there are five different sets of tracks from different animals? <laughs> I only said there was one set of hippo tracks heading to the store. Then why are we talking about frogs and toads? I have no earthly idea. The mayor struggles into the assembly hall, pulling on a cravat. Escobar's hippo appears, waging a mighty tug of war with the mayor for the lion's share of the cravat. The townspeople panic. You may have my, my bodyguard. You, oh my God. you may have taken my guardian. But you won't. Escobar's hippo. What do we do? I, I, I don't know. Juan pulls out an, ap an arepa from his pocket. He picks it up and throws the arepa at Escobar's hippo. This Go away! greatly offends Go. the hippo again. Go! Go away. Escobar's hippo lets go of the cravat and leaves. Okay, is everyone all right? Yeah, I think so. I feel like I pulled a back muscle. I think that was a hippo and it had feet. Fine, we'll call them feet. Am I the only one who didn't know about that hippo? Just me? The mayor has sunk to his knees, holding the shredded cravat, mourning the loss of said cravat. Juan exits in the direction of the hippo. A few moments later, Juan returns. Uh, <laughs> there, there's a man outside. I, I think he's dead. What? Bernardo exits with Juan to investigate. They return a moment later. Uh, oh, he, he was just, he was just trampled. He sacrificed himself to protect me. He's a real hero. We need to set up a memorial. Did anyone happen to see a cardigan next to his body? What? I, I, I don't know. The mayor rushes out. Listen to the mayor. What a pure heart. We're in the loss of a manservant. The mayor returns with what used to be a really, really fetching cardigan. <laughs> we, we must begin our meeting. We must show that our glorious civilization is resilient against the bestial tides of nature. We must, we must show the murder and butcher of those things precious to us <laughs> that we are not easily felled by intrusions and audacity. We must come together, unite, 
by our common cause to bring this destroyer of what we hold precious to justice. Yes, for the dead! <laughs> for my cardigan and cravat! <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, the manservant, uh, his name was Cardigan Cravat. Uh, <laughs> a tragic loss. <laughs> if I have another child, I shall name that baby Cardigan Cravat in his honor. <laughs> no, order! Order, we, we, we must act quickly. If we're, we are to overcome this, this, this crisis, first, uh, as in any criminal investigation, we must establish a pathology, an overall profile of what do we know about our enemy? Uh, it's a fucking hippo. <laughs> a, a rampaging hippo. Uh, query! Acknowledged. Is the hippo rampaging or cavorting? The hell's the difference to a hippo? Rampaging denotes malicious intent. Cavorting means, God bless it, it doesn't know any better. It may as well be frolicking. It just frolicked a man to death. Again, what is the difference? Question. Acknowledged. Do we know where the hippo came from? Aren't they from Africa? Uh, so, it's a foreign invader <laughs> violating our national sovereignty. Uh, are we sure it's a foreigner? What do you mean? My grandfather worked on Pablo Escobar Farm in Annapolis years ago. Escobar bought many animals from Africa. After he was killed, the government well, they retrieved all the animals, but they wouldn't take those four hippos that he left behind. Why not? I'm not certain. Are you telling me that our government refused to remove this, this invasive predator? Or is the government unable to remove the hippos? Explain. Well, it's clear that our government was able to arrest, detain, and deport other animals to their countries of origin. Why not these hippos? Because the hippos would try to kill anyone that comes near. Or did Escobar uh, secure the correct documentation and paperwork to bring the hippos here and establish them as nationalized citizens of Colombia? Wait, can, can hippos become Colombian citizens? I am. Um, if the hippo has proper documentation, I suppose it's possible. <laughs> Query. Acknowledged. Could their citizenship be revoked on grounds of being a public menace? I, um... Could your citizenship be revoked for being a public menace? Oh. Of course not. I was born in Colombia. I have no other nation of origin. Oh. Question. Acknowledged. What if this hippo has no other nation of origin? That's absurd. Hippos aren't from Colombia. Point of order! That's xenophobic! How dare you insinuate I'm a xenophobe! You said hippos are not from Colombia, but it is a distinct possibility that this hippo is from Colombia. I retract my statement and ask all accusations of xenophobia to be stricken from the record. Well, the record keeper was frolicked or rampaged on by the hippo. So. Question. Acknowledged. What if this hippo is a descendant of the four hippos who emigrated here? Are you saying that hippo is a natural citizen and that we have no right to deport it from this country? But, but, but surely we could arrest the hippo, yeah? Can we? But can't you obtain naturalized citizenship after living in the country for five years? But you have to pass a test. How, how would a hippo pass this test? But that's a legitimate question. If this hippo has met the requisite five-year re requirement living here, as it has, it, is it our civic duty to offer this hippo the chance at Colombian citizenship and then administer the test? It's only fair. How would we know if it qualifies or has already taken the test? Well, um, I... So, wait, so what we need to figure out is if this hippo is either an undocumented immigrant, a naturalized citizen, or a Colombian by birth. Does this mean that there is a brand new species of hippo? A Colombian hippo? Could that potentially mean that this makes that hippo a national treasure? I wouldn't go that far, but it certainly makes it one of us. Query. You don't have to keep saying query. Have we considered the possibility that this new species of hippo may be endangered? Do we have conservation well, laws in place for the Colombian hippo? I, I, um, well, still, we haven't answered the question of whether it is Colombian. How will we even know? <clears throat> Do you think there are any records? 
Question. We don't need to keep doing that. Where would we find a hippo's birth certificate? <laughs> uh, I mean, it stands to reason it would be at Hacienda Annapolis where Escobar first brought them, the hippos. Wouldn't it? That means we need to contact Hacienda Annapolis for the records. Uh, it's abandoned. It's practically a ruin. Wait, we're overcomplicating this. Why not just ask the hippo directly for its citizenship to status? Oh. And who in the right mind is gonna go up to a hippo and ask for its papers? <laughs> we need to get back on track. As, as I see things, we need to establish several committees, task force, and gather it at aiming inf gathering information and preparing ourselves for all eventualities, regardless of what they are, whether it's a resident pest or a potential compatriot. Fine, 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 fine. Strike it from the record. Now, as I see it, we need a task force for the eventuality of capture and deportation of the hippo should it prove to be an undocumented immigrant first overlooked by our government in the original raids of Hacienda Napoles. Agreed? Next. Query. Ignored! <laughs> How do we form a committee? Begrudgingly, I acknowledge that this is a query <laughs> that needs answering. I propose that we form a council to select a committee from a pool of worthy candidates for a committee and task force. Question. Please stop. Simple. We get qualified individuals to lead this task force. Has anyone lived in close proximity to hippos or either African or Colombian? Uh, I, I, lived in, I lived near the Hacienda Annapolis when I visited my grandfather. You! You are now the head of various councils, committees, task force, and all other such bodies which will decide all questions surrounding our hippo issue. What? What? Query. Oh, God. <laughs> Regardless of anything, there's going to be a lot of paperwork involved, some of which this hippo will have to sign. Can a hippo sign anything? Poor deer has no hands. No, no, no. Several yeah. animals have survived fine just without hands. But this is a potential Colombian citizen. We need to make sure it can sign documents. Would a stamp of its hoof print work? Point of order, we've established that hippos have feet. Oh, Does it really matter? I still think they're paws. No, we all agree that hippos have feet. We'll get a stamp, Brandon, to drop the subject. Point of order! No more. Now, who amongst us will volunteer to go to the hacienda and try to retrieve the hippos' birth records? I, I can go. I can do it. I I I'll go with you. You, you may need protection. That's oh, a good idea. No, no, uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> good idea. Traveling in pairs means you can cover more ground. All in favor? Aye. 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 So it is. So it shall be. Go forth, you two. I volunteer Juan to speak with the hippo. That's an idea. What is happening? <laughs> Go, then, our bravest and finest, most Learned citizen, <laughs> though you risk your life, know that your community also risked everything by risking your precious life. Escobar's hippo has returned. Uh, is, is meeting adjourned. Uh, Godspeed. You, you all have your task. The townspeople panic and flee. The mayor ties the remnants of the cravat around his neck and exits. Juan, Dali, and Bernardo remain. Come with us. Uh. No, I'm sorry, no. I should stay and keep an eye on things here and try to interrogate the hippo. Let's meet tomorrow at the cafe and we'll, we'll share notes, okay? Yes, yes, good idea, Juan, good, good idea. Come on, we gotta go get those papers. Shit. Bernardo takes Dalia's hand and they exit. Juan is left alone. Wait, how the fuck do you talk to a hippo? Blackout. <laughs> Scene three, call of the hippo. Juan follows a trail along the river, holding a lunchbox full of arepas. No, 
No. Send Juan. Juan will do it. Juan's stupid enough. Juan has no self-respect. Send the only responsible adult. Of course, that makes sense. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? Why did I agree? Bernardo? So that he could have a shot with the waitress, with some woman who does, he doesn't even know her name. For the greater good. It's for the greater good. Find a hippo and, and ask if it could hoof print something or paw print or sign, verify its citizenship. Fuck, wait, what am I actually doing? I need to leave, man. This is absurd. Oh, damn it. A low, menacing laugh and rumbling. A brown mist fills the stage. Juan wretches. Oh. oh! What the? What is that? A sound like a weed eater fills the air. Something brown is flung at Juan, who dodges or gets hit, depends on the night. Oh my god! This is so this. Oh my god! Oh no! No! Escobar's hippo enters, backside first, tail spinning and flinging solid excrement and turning more watery excrement into a mist with its rotating tail. As we see its head, it has the look of supreme joy as it releases the contents of its bowels. <laughs> what is wrong with you, you filthy animal? Escobar's hippo looks around, not knowing where that noise came from. Was that God? What is God? Was that a fart sound? If so, the hippo has yet to hear such a thing before. Can it be done again? This is too much thinking. The hippo snorts and shakes its head, perishing all thoughts. Over here, you stupid beast. The hippo realizes that the noise is coming from behind. The hippo turns and sees Juan, the offensive one with the arepas. You. You. Us nothing but mess after mess ever since you came into this town. You need to leave. That's right. Wait. Wait. Look what you've done. Eh? You destroyed people. You killed people. The hippo considers Juan for a moment before deciding that Juan is no true th threat. The hippo rolls over on its back and spreads its legs. The hippo just loves the way the afternoon sun kisses its nethers. What are you doing? I'm trying to confront you here. Why are you asleep? I'm confronting you. Juan goes into his lunchbox and pulls out an arepa and hurls it at the hippo. The hippo's eyes snap open. The hippo turns over on all fours and stares at Juan. The hippo is greatly offended once again. Juan realizes he <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm here to, uh, hey, are you a Colombian citizenship, a citizen? Hey, were you born here or were you born? No, 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 hold on, hold on. <laughs> Juan begins to back away slowly as the hippo continues to laugh. The hippo suddenly rushes at Juan with frightening speed. Juan jumps out of the way. No! The hippo turns around and shakes his head, ready no, for no, a second no, no. charge. No, no, no. Juan reaches for his lunchbox and pulls out another arepa. The hippo stops, eyeing Juan with anger and disgust, but not moving. You're going to stop right there, or I'll use this! The hippo sniffs the air. The hippo raises its mighty head and opens its mouth. A long roar held in a single hypnotic note. Juan drops the arepa and covers his ears. The hippo stops and stares at Juan. Juan stares back defiantly, slowly lowering his hands. The hippo begins to stomp rhythmically and grunt chant. <laughs> What, what are you? The air is filled with more stomping and grunt chants. The lights begin to fade as the noises multiply. Juan looks around. How is this? How is this happening? The hippo charges at Juan before Juan can react. Blackout. Scene four. The hippo is the remnants of the man. The ruin of Hacienda Napolis, a once beautiful compound and getaway for Paulo Escobar, now decayed by time, nature, and general disrepair. It is twilight. In the distance, we hear rampaging or cavorting hippos drawing closer as the scene progresses. Bernardo and Dalia sit together, exhausted. 
Why didn't the government take care of the hippos? Because they're hippos. What does that even mean? Well, because they're big, dumb animals, not worth paying attention to. Plus, they live in the water. It's difficult to capture animals like that. Then why not just kill them? Because they're living beings. They, they deserve to live. But they have no natural predators in Colombia. And that's their fault? So we risk our lives because it's not their fault that they have no natural predator in a place they do not belong? They deserve a chance to coexist with us. These hippos are rampaging everywhere and destroying everything. Did you not see what they did and what they were doing on the way here? Maybe that's just their way. Why are you defending them? I am not defending them. I'm just curious about why they are the way they are is to undermine our society and cause destruction. If they destroy our creations, shouldn't we try to do all we can to stop them? If there's a peaceful way to do that, then sure. Be fucking stupid. You can't preach peace to something that only wants to destroy things. Do you think all hippos are like that? Destroyers? Oh, are you suggesting we reason with if, them? If we can. We can't reason with the legacy of a drug lord. You don't seem to separate it from Escobar. The hippo is a remnant of the man. So we treat the remnant like we treated the man? You prefer trying to reason with a brute beast that destroys our way of life for its own gain? No, I'm just... There are ethical concerns, don't you think? Uh, does a hippo bother to concern itself with ethics? Just because they don't bother doesn't mean we abandon what makes us human. They go low, we go high. Do you know what happens when you go high and they go low? What? You miss your punch and lose your balls. There's another way, I'm sure. What does it matter? We should be defending ourselves instead of going on wild goose chases looking for birth certificates that we know don't exist. How do we know they don't exist? Because they're fucking hippos. Fair point, fair point. So why are we still here? I personally saw this as a way to keep ourselves safe while the town sorted out the hippo problem. You are pathetic. If preferring, if preferring to live is pathetic, then I don't want to be brave. <laughs> I'm your friend Juan. What about him? What about the townspeople? Juan and everybody else could have chosen to come. But they decided to stay. They are confronting the problem. So while they're doing that, we can stay here until it's all clear and come back ready to help rebuild the town. What if there's no town to go back to? Right, right, because one hippo is going to destroy the whole entire town. You don't hear them, do you? It's a matter of time, unless we act. The sounds of the hippo grow more fervent, wilder. Bernardo looks around, nervously, but tries to play it off with a laugh. <laughs> uh, you're, a, you're a surprisingly intelligent woman. Why surprisingly? Oh, you know, you're, you're a cute waitress working at a cafe, and you're just, uh, you're just surprising. <laughs> Why is it surprising? It it's just, I thought I was the only intelligent person in town, and, and it's just refreshing to know someone else actually thinks about things, you know? No, no, I, I don't know, actually. And I still don't understand why you think it's surprising. Well, I... I, I uh-huh, uh-huh, what I find surprising <laughs> is that you have the actual audacity to be surprised by my intelligence, when you don't even have the brain capacity to realize that we cannot reason with a fucking wild animal brought into our country by a glorified drug mule. You really hate him, huh? <laughs> look, look at everything around us. This used to be beautiful. This used to be a place where children played. And now it's, it's just another corpse left behind by Pablo Escobar. Did an Escobar build this place? Yeah, and look at what happens to everything he touched. Ruins, destruction. But it was still built. Would, it th would this be here if it weren't for Escobar? What's here are hippos destroying our country. These are the consequences of creating your own place in the world. You know, I want to get to a time 
when we are beyond dealing with the consequences of male stupidity? Bernardo places an arm around Dahlia, who is not in the mood for Bernardo's flirt tactics. Maybe, maybe I have misspoken. I, I apologize. I meant to say I knew you were beautiful, but I didn't know you held such strong conviction. Dahlia pushes Bernardo's arm off her and scoots away from Bernardo. There's a lot you don't know. Bernardo draws closer to Dahlia, thinking that she's playing hard to get. I, I hope, um, I hope uh, I can get to know you. I get to know you a little better. We have a hippo problem to deal with. What? After that? After that? After that, we'll see. Is that a promise? You know, think of it more like um, we'll see each other again at the cafe. And I'll smile right at you and ask you about your bad plays and pretend like I care. You know, so that you give me a better tip. <laughs> Beautiful, intelligent, witty. Deal. It's a date. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with this problem first, and then after we'll talk about your actual chances. Okay? Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Dahlia tries to run for it, but Bernardo grabs her hand and pulls her to him. Stand by me, I'll, I'll protect you. Let me go, you dumbass. No, I'm sure those are hippos, not asses. No, you're the ass, not the hippos. We can't stop the hippos. Oh my god, that's why we need to run. Uh, oh. Dahlia pulls Bernardo with her and they try to exit. <laughs> Just before reaching off stage, another scream fills the air. The hippos stop their chanting and drumbeat. Dahlia and Bernardo also stop, faces showing horror at what's in front of them. Holy shit! They back away from where they were trying to exit, and there enters a hippo sapien! A grotesque hybrid with the body of a, of a human and the head of a hippo! It moves about on two legs awkwardly, trying to disproportionately hold its large head up. Oh my god! People have been fucking hippos? And this is a hybrid child? No, no, no! It's transforming into a hippo! People don't transform into hippos! They don't well then, what the fuck is that? It doesn't matter, we need to run, now! The hippo sapien falls and gets up on all fours. It shakes its head like a dog shaking off water before spotting Dalia and Bernardo. <laughs> Bernardo locks eyes with the hippo sapien. The hippo sapien interprets this as a challenge. Bernardo, meanwhile, thinks that he's making a profound connection between man and beast. I think it's trying to speak with us. <laughs> Forgive me if I don't care. Right now? The hippo sapien begins to make its way towards Dalia and Bernardo slowly, almost laboriously, as it gets used to moving. What are you trying to say to us? <laughs> ah. I didn't get that, but I felt, I felt the emotion behind it, and, and you're confused. Huh? Oh, oh, poor bees. You're practically an idiot. Oh, <laughs> Patronize it? It's an animal. It doesn't understand things like being patronized. I'm pretty sure it understands you. No, it doesn't. It's just a big old stupid animal. <sighs> oh, yes you are. Oh, yes you are, you ugly little creature. Yes you are. See? It's like a baby. You can insult it all you want. All it understands is tone. Oh, you dumb beast. Oh, yes you Oh, Oh, you're so stupid. Oh, you so stupid. Yes, you are. The hippo sapien does not appreciate condescension. It starts waddling a little faster toward Bernardo, who is touched. Look, 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 look. He wants to meet me. He wants to kill you. You don't know that. <laughs> Neither do you. This is where we could make serious, we could make a serious breakthrough. At the very least, this is a massive scientific discovery. Part hippo, part human. The hippo sapien reaches Bernardo and stands on its haunches. Bernardo opens his arms for a hug. Dahlia pulls Bernardo away just as the hippo sapien swipes. Oh, look, look, he's trying to give me a high five. <laughs> oh, sorry, buddy. I'm too slow. Bernardo wags a mocking finger at the hippo sapien. The hippo sapien can take no more. Oh, shit. We need to get out of here now. 
They exit, pursued by the hippo sapien. The stage is filled with the primal grunts of the hippos. <laughs> Scene five. Hippolytics. The assembly hall. Two podiums. The townspeople are seated, talking among themselves. I don't understand. Is this even legal? Do you think the mayor should even show up? The mayor has to, right? I think so. The mayor enters with a confused look. As the mayor reaches the podium, a loud snorting is heard. The hippo enters, dressed like a politician with Juan, who is in a nicely pressed suit. Juan takes a seat near the podiums. The townspeople shift uncomfortably, seeing the hippo. What the hell is going on? <clears throat> Thank you all for attending our first debate of four this week. There's going to be four debates? Uh, yeah. We want to make sure that we have a rigorous and thorough discourse so that voters can make an informed and smart decision before going to the ballot box in this snap election that we have started. There is absolutely no contest. Oh, that's not what others believe. But is, let's get to it. This is a waste of time. Oh, according to the signatures that we've gathered, there are many voters who are dissatisfied with the direction of the political discourse. Nope, nope, nope. The hippo begins to nuzzle its head against the bench, bench, scratching an itch. The mayor watches in horror. Are you serious? What the hell is going on here? Th this is a joke, an absolute travesty to our political process. I will not debate a hippo. We, we don't even know if it, if it can run. Your anti-immigrant sentiment aside, we gathered the signatures to initiate a recall. An anti-immigrant? The hippo? That, that is neither here or there. Look, I will be moderating this debate, OK? And I will make sure to ask the best questions. Which? Where did you get these signatures from? Who would actually nominate a hippo to run? Voters. An animal cannot run for human office. Where is that statue? It can't even answer a debate question. I will translate. You can't speak hippo. Prove it. No, you prove it. The hippo, meanwhile, wishes to urinate and dreams of the chance. <laughs> Very well. Watch me prove it. First. Debate question. Mayor, how do you answer to the allegations centering about the controversy of cardigan cravat? <gasps> you can't talk about cardigan. Our thoughts and prayers are with him always. This debate is a sham. To try to besmirch a hero's name? Yeah. Boo! 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 There, there is no controversy. Ah, precisely. <laughs> there is no controversy. Cardigan cravat does not exist. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? Cardigan is a hero who gave his life to protect his city from terrorist threats from uh, that, that hippo. But... <laughs> I, I, I think we should stick to the substance of the question. <laughs> Cardigan is real. Long live Cardigan! <sighs> and Cardigan's family, the Cravats? They asked for uh, privacy at this time. <laughs> there is no Cardigan Cravat on the record. Am I debating you or the hippo? I'm just following up on questions. Wait, why is there no Cardigan Cravat on record? Yeah, Mayor. This is a farce. <laughs> the, the, the hippo doesn't even know human speech. Bored and in need of amusement, the hippo smashes through the podium, rushes the mayor, and gores him <laughs> with its mighty tusk. Oh my god, that's my mayor! <laughs> wait, wait! Wait! Everyone, wait! Look, this is how we achieve change. The mighty hippo has just cut through the red tape 
and the bullshit. Hey, he just killed the symbol of corruption in our town. The elite have lied, and now they pay with their lives. This is revolution! The mayor was just murdered. We need to stop that hippo. Hurry! The townspeople begin to advance on the hippo, who is now rolling over the corpse of the mayor. Suddenly, a group of hippo sapiens rushes in and begins attacking the townspeople. <laughs> yes, there will be change. <laughs> you can choose to evolve with the times or find yourself destroyed. Underfoot! By the future! <laughs> the hippo sapiens chase the townsfolk out. The hippo decides it's time for a swim in some tasty grass and walks off. Scene six. The hippo in the old man's pants. Assembly hall, nighttime. Snacks and a pitcher of water at a table. The sounds of hippos grunting as the townspeople sit hiding and debating. Townspersons one through four are engaged in lively chatter, while townsperson five is clearly perturbed and breathing deeply. I, I saw the mayor hanging from a tusk. So did the hippo eat the mayor? But hippos don't eat people, do they? Query. Acknowledged. Are we certain there's only one hippo now? More hippos? We have no reason to believe there are more hippos. But then what were those people attacking us? And, and what are those noises outside? Just masks. It has to be. But it didn't look like masks. And their arms and legs, they... They, they look like a hippo's leg where a human leg should have been. That doesn't mean anything. There are more hippos. I know it. Anyone else feel warm? I think some people are transforming into hippos. Why would you say that? Well, one of those things that attacked us was wearing my neighbor's clothes. So you think somehow your neighbor changed into a hippo? But it can't be possible. Seriously. It's really odd. What do we think causes a change? Disease? Magic? Magic? That's preposterous. Humans don't transform into other animals. This isn't some Kafka or Marquez story. Point of order. I have been slandered. How? Because you said I was preposterous. Why? Why is it so fucking odd in here? Language, please. We must maintain decorum in the assembly hall. You want decorum? You want decorum? Okay, 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 easy calm now. Down. Sit down. Yes. Sorry, just a little stressed. We're all stressed, but we can't lose our cool. We must advance with open eyes and a calm mind. Question. Acknowledged. Outside the window, uh, am I seeing correctly? The townspeople look out the window. <laughs> yup, definitely two hippos showing their uh, everything. That's my neighbor. The old man, he, he's a hippo now. My god, they're defecating everywhere. I didn't know their tails could do that. We need some water. It's exactly. Is it is it some kind of disease? Can we catch it? Please. I'm asking nicely. Water. What, what does this all mean? Water? Where? I, I need it. It's too dry. It, it's too dry. Don't be silly. We're by a river. How can it be dry? Are you calling me a fucking liar? The townspeople fall silent and Sarah Towns person by. Townsperson one leaps into action and pours a cup of water from a pitcher on the table. Give me the pitcher. All of it? Give me the fucking pitcher! Townsperson one hands Townsperson five the pitcher, who immediately dumps the water all over himself. <sighs> Not enough. I, uh, I need more! More! Townsperson five gets up and leaves, walking with a distinct waddle. Oh. My. God. They were so rude. All right, order, order. Yes, fine, what? There are now three hippos. Three? Yes, and that one is wearing like what looks to be a dress. Townsperson one looks out the window. Yes, uh, it looks, there is a third hippo. Question. Acknowledged. There is no actual query with my colleague's query. And there's no question to your question, my dear and honorable colleague. Is there a penalty, do you think, for? They are interrupted by the sounds. You know the ones. The sounds hippos make when they love each other very, very much. <laughs> the townspeople lean forward on the window. I know the dress on that third hippo. Whose is it? 
That's my neighbor's wife. She turned into a hippo. That's impossible. People don't... He'd always talk about his performance issues, too. But by all indications, based on what's happening out there, there are no issues with the act of performing. She looks really happy. Well, I mean, look at the size of that thing. More noises. More grunts. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Townsperson 3 nods. Townsperson 1 is right. It is time to shut the fuck up. The grunting noises grow louder, more needy, more passionate. Oh, wow. Oh, they're in public. Do they have no shame? There's nothing to be ashamed of there. Jesus. <laughs> a howl that eventually settles down into a low murmur. Well, I guess that's that. The noises resume. Everyone is snapped out of the reverie when the doors to the assembly hall fly open, revealing townsperson five, only now with the arms of a hippo. <sighs> Sorry about that. I was really thirsty. It is contagious. What's contagious? The hippo mess. What do you mean? Your arms. Mm. What about them? Have you seen them? <sighs> what are you trying to say? You're, you're ill. <laughs> ill? I've never felt better in my life. I feel like I can do anything. My arms have never felt stronger, more powerful. Townsperson 5 smashes the table of snacks, which collapses. The townspeople back away. How could anyone say that I'm sick? Who said such a thing? Who? Look at all of you, throwing queries and questions, acting self-important, creating committees to study problems that could have been solved with a bullet between the eyes. You don't see what I see. You don't understand what I understand. You need to calm down. <laughs> oh, but you see? I am calm. I'm the calmest I've ever been because I've seen the truth and the truth outrages me. What kind of <sighs> truth are you talking about? Mm. I don't need to explain myself to anyone. The hippos are right. The hippos were always right. We just never listen. The hippos aren't indecisive cowards pretending to be something they aren't. They want something, they get it. They have a problem, they solve it. They don't need committees. They don't need stupid little children playing pretend politics. They are who they are, they own it. That's something we should all be doing, but no. You sheep are too weak. So stay here. Stay here and let your life pass you by. I, meanwhile, I'm with them. I'm one of them! Townsperson 5 exits. The townspeople stand there a moment trying to find the words. Query. You don't need to say that anymore. I guess it's safe to say that that's definitely my neighborhood wife out there. Yes, I suppose so. The government needs to intervene. Why? This is clearly an epidemic infecting our people. Is it? What are you saying? I'm saying I heard a lot of truth just now. Like what? I heard the call to freedom. Look at those hippos. They look so happy. Yeah, they do. But they're animals! Are they? Or have they figured out how to really live? Imagine having the freedom to do whatever you want. Nobody can stop you because you do whatever you want. I mean, when you're a fucking hippo, who can stop you? There's no cleaning your house, no chores, bills, no care at all except to eat, swim, live, in fucking public. You don't care what other people think because you're free. The noises, you know the ones, resume. Imagine having that old man's stamina. Imagine the world with no taxes. Ooh, now wait a minute, that. Imagine not having to worry about buying clothes anymore. No more suits, no more shoes. No more uncomfortable cravats, no struggles. No more questions. No more being afraid. They all ponder this and look amongst each other. The rhythmic snorts of the hippos outside begin. The stomping soon follows. The townspeople smile and embrace each other, making their decision. Slowly, one by one, they file out of the assembly hall. <laughs> Juan sits sipping some coffee as a procession of hippo sapiens pass, trumpeting and grunting. Arepas are strung up around him, forming a kind of protective barrier against the hippos. A large stack of arepas in Bernardo's script sits on the table. One of the hippo sapiens draws close, but Juan quickly throws one of the arepas at the hippo sapien, who backs away with a grunt. The hippo sapiens exit, their grunting growing distant. Juan continues to sip his coffee. <sighs> Hundreds of years to get it right. And at the end of the world, 
coffee still here is burnt. <laughs> Bernardo enters looking terrified. Spotting Juan, Bernardo yells out, overjoyed at finding his friend. Bernardo tears through the barrier of arepas. One of Juan's hands tightens into a fist. I worked very hard on that. Juan, I'm sorry for breaking your, uh... Arepa barrier, duh. What? What the fuck is an are arepa barrier? Arepas ward off hippos. Hell no. I didn't know that. Neither did any of us. That is until after you left. We have to put the barrier back up then. Hurry, hurry. Another tries to string the arepas back up. It falls apart. It doesn't matter. They'll be coming soon. The hippos? The hippos, yeah. We have to get out of here. Eight. What? That's eight times that you've been late. Eight! Do you realize that? Juan, what is happening? What's happening is that you have been abusing my friendship for years. I'm sorry, I'm late. But Juan, the fucking hippos are rampaging all over the place. And yet, somehow, I still managed to be here at the appointed time, and you are late, like always. And like always, I show up, didn't I? But late, always late. Why are the hippos everywhere? Where, where is everyone? They're hippos. The hippos ate them? No, they are hippos. They also transformed here? There are things that you should know. Such as? Did you know that the hippos are said to produce pink milk? <laughs> yeah? I see. Uh... <laughs> it actually began as an urban legend. Their milk is white or beige in color. But hippos do secrete this hipposudric acid in their sweat, so which acts as a suntan lotion. Eh? But if that acid should to mix with that hippo milk, then we get the pink milk. <laughs> uh, thank you for all that information. Hey, tell me, tell me about your trip to Hacienda Annapolis. What does it matter? I. So did you find the birth certificates? No. <laughs> I, I, I am not surprised. Why? What hippo has a fucking birth certificate? Why didn't you mention that? I assumed that you were trying to get that waitress alone so that you could seduce her. <laughs> that was uh, that was secondary to the more important mission. Ah, really? I mean it. Right. And by any chance, where is the waitress? We lost each other in the chaos. <laughs> what chaos? Hippo people everywhere at Hacienda Napoles. How many? They had to be in the they had to be in the thousands. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> um do you think that hippos they, they, they have religion? Uh, I don't understand your question. No, like 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 to these people? Hacienda Annapolis is like the holy site? You're not making any sense. It's like the Garden of Eden. Don't you think? It, the place where their god brought them to build their hippodome. Their, their god? Yeah, Pablo Escobar. He's not a god. But to us, no. But perhaps to the hippos and their converts. They have these, these, these hippo people. Pablo Escobar and those who follow his ways are the beginning of a religion. Wouldn't that make Escobar more of a prophet? Ay, but in any case, Fascinating, don't you think? They're hippos, not the subject of anthropological research. But did you know that hippos can defecate? And when they do, they rotate their tails like this and like a little fan in the windshield. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. You know why? I don't. Their tail flings their shit away from them. <laughs> Sometimes right in the face of their predators or their enemies, eh? And that's why? You should never sneak up on a hippo. They're ready. You know, <laughs> you know a lot about hippos. Yeah, and sometimes, depending on the consistency of the waist, that's when, as they say, 
shit hits the fan. <laughs> As it were, because when a hippo tail spins like a fat, you know, the watery consistency can create a mist of hippo feces <laughs> that spreads several yards from the hippo's anus. All right, you're making me nervous. Juan stares without blinking at Bernardo. Bernardo shifts uncomfortably. Juan gives a toothy grin. His bottom two canine teeth appear bigger. I must confess, I was a little bit nervous myself. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, I mean, it was terribly risky trying to run a hippo for political office. Political office? Yeah, I thought for sure it was over when the, when the hippo gored the mayor. <laughs> the mayor was gored? Mm -hmm, and killed. <laughs> Honestly, the hippo's political aspirations should have died when he urinated himself. <laughs> what? Um, but yeah, I suppose people like the honesty in which the hippo approached the situation, you know? Ah, oh well, who can say? <laughs> this is nuts. Ah, for a brief moment, I thought that I can control him. <laughs> but not without. <laughs> Becoming. <laughs> Be becoming? Yeah. Hey, did you leave her behind? You know, when the chaos came? In Hacienda Napolis? I would never. <laughs> so she decided to cut the death weight and she left you, huh? <laughs> Juan, we got separated. Yeah. What's her name? It's, uh... It's Dahlia. I, I knew that. Yeah, yeah. Stop lying already. I planned on learning her name. It's just that it, it never came up. <laughs> of course. Finding out about names is more for after you fuck them, right? Juan coughs. <coughs> Was that a grunt? Bernardo shifts his weight and involuntarily squirms at the sound of Juan's grunt coughing. God. You're ill. Typical, yeah. Fucking typical. Changing the subject whenever you get called out for your shit. Juan, I, I know I can be a fuck up. Can be. Well, I, I... Look, if you make no attempt to change. I'm sorry. Juan grunts in acknowledgement and with a hand gestures to a chair. Mm. Bernardo takes a seat and reaches for an arepa before offering it to Juan. Get that thing away from me! Are you hungry? Get that thing away from me! Bernardo drops the arepa. What the hell's going on, Juan? I wonder... I wonder if humans can transform into hippos. Do you really think it could be reversed? Why are you asking that question? What, am I not allowed to ask questions? I'm not saying you shouldn't ask questions, but why that one? Because... If humans are able to do what, what, what was thought evolutionary impossible, I wonder if, if the reverse could be true. Could, could one transform from hippo to human? Okay. So you need to have been human previously to, to go back. Right? Is hippo fictation reversible? Can humanization occur? Why would anyone want to become a hippo? Can't you see why? Why would, it, why would anyone have to give up their humanity, especially to transform into a hippo? And yet, people are choosing to transform. It's because people want an excuse to be animals. Say more. I see, ra rather, I saw what those hippos do. They act on their, on their base instincts. If they aren't launching around lazily, they're destroying things or fucking on the town square. see their massive shift in consciousness and grotesquely, grotesquely painful choice to oneself as an excuse by the masses to return to their, to their most foul and basic nature. Yes. I, I, I always a contrarian. Do you see things differently? <laughs> yeah, I do. And how is that? The people are choosing to transform. They are protesting. What are they protesting? They're protesting a failed society. 
They're protesting a society that could have been bothered to get rid of the problem, left behind by a drug lord and corruption. They're protesting our inability to, to take decisions, to make decisions for the common good, because we place higher premium on life of a fucking animal than our own citizens. Yo, we lost everything in this rampage. Of course people want change. If the hippo can do as it pleases, then one must become the hippo. One is seeking for liberty. We seek liberation. At what cost? Cost? It's not worth our humanity. To keep our humanity is, is to place us in danger. You don't mean that. Ah, but I do. <laughs> I do. You know, you know what happened to those people who refused, who refused while you were in Hacienda Annapolis? Those who changed trampled those who refused to change. God. It's no longer for, for no ideological reason. People are changing to protect themselves. It, it's it's necessary. It's, ne it's a necessity to survive. This is plain evolution at work. Then they're cowards, and the blood of the dead is on their uh, on their paws. Uh, Hopes. Did, did we decide what kind of feet appendages hippos had? I think they're web feet. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Those who change to protect themselves, they're complicit. That's not evolution, that's cowardice. <laughs> You're saying that death is preferable. <laughs> preferable to losing our civilization and common humanity. It's not like we're losing everything. There's the echoes of a society and they're grunting and rampaging. They have leaders, they have convictions. They use their tails to make poop mist. Sweat, suntan, lotion, and fuck on the town square. They're wild beasts with absurd biology and impulses. You know what's more absurd than a human who can't keep track of time, who goes out there and looks for hippo certificates? Why are you defending them? I'm just making an observation. Your observations are hurtful. Another observation. Did you know? That hippos laugh. <laughs> that means that they're ready to kill. Uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Just imagine one of the world's most dangerous men with one of the world's most dangerous creatures. <laughs> Their eyes meet. They laugh. What could that laugh mean to such to as they? Uh, I wouldn't know. Ah, I got a joke. Yeah. <clears throat> Pablo Escobar and his business associates were coming to Hacienda Napolis to see Escobar's animal. Escobar asked if the business associates would like to hear a joke. Hey, you want to hear a joke? Hey, the associate says, oh, yes, I do. Wait, 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 wait. A joke within a joke? Yeah. <laughs> Escobar comments here that he is running, or that running a zoo is much like their business. Eh? How, the associate asks. Ah, well, you have to do the routine maintenance and clean up waste. They reach the hippo pit. The hippo approaches. Uh, Escobar and the hippo. They make eye contact. They laugh. <laughs> the business associate is confused. You don't get the joke? Laughs Escobar. Associate is a little nervous. You have to clean up the trash! <laughs> and both Escobar and the hippo laugh as Escobar pushes the associate into the pit. The hippo laughs. Escobar laughs. The associate screams. The hippo laughs. The associate laughs. Oh no, he's dead. Silence. And Escobar grimaces. 
And he says, that motherfucker never had a sense of humor anyways. <laughs> Is there more? <laughs> no. Wait. Oh. <sighs> Pero you're not laughing. Maybe I didn't get the joke. <laughs> uh, laugh. I what? I said laugh! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I reread your play. <laughs> Should we? Be trying to get out of here? No, no, let's talk about your play. <laughs> Come on. You didn't like it. Oh, okay. On the contrary, it was a, <clears throat> a revelation. A revelation. <laughs> really? Yeah. The last hurrah for mankind before their inevitable decline. <laughs> a tour de force showing exactly why humanity was doomed. The moment that that hip was stale on our foot, our foot on our toe. And just like the end of your play, all we have is a sad, pitiful whimper <laughs> before the final finale. <laughs> you have gone too far. Oh, have I? You're abusing my friendship. And what have you been doing since we've met? I. I've never tried to put you down. Mm -hmm. Oh no, you've done worse. You wasted my time. Okay? You had me wait forever. I could have died at any moment, and those precious moments are used up on your fucking vanity projects, eh? forcing me to go to the faraway cafes with burnt coffee and overpriced arepas just so you can try to fuck some waitress whose name you don't even know. You disgust me with your self interest. Fucking Parasitic leech. That's what you are, Bernardo. Juan flips the table over, causing arepas to scatter and coffee to spill. Bernardo falls out of his seat and tries to crawl away. Juan, Juan, Juan. let's talk. Please. Talk. <laughs> you want to talk now? Juan exits into the cafe. <laughs> Bernardo looks around and grabs a very dull butter knife from the floor. Juan returns, wielding a pot of coffee. Oh, you know what? No, 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 no. You're right, bro. Let's talk. Let's talk, come on. Come ah, on. Juan, please, stop, Juan. Ah, Juan, what are you doing, stop! Bernardo ah. brandishes the butter knife at Juan. Juan stops and considers Bernardo before smiling again, showing his enlarged bottom canines. Hey, what do you plan on doing with that fucking thing, huh? <laughs> You're having an episode. Calm down. We can get you through this breakdown together. Breakdown. Breakdown. You can't think clearly because you're not in your right mind, Juan. Oh, I am in my right mind. I have never felt that I could think more clearly in my whole life. What are you saying? They're going to conquer the world soon, you know. And it's either join the ranks or die. <laughs> I choose life. I choose to join them. Who? The hippos, you fucking moron! Juan hurls the coffee pot back into the cafe and it makes a loud crashing sound. Bernardo scrambles to stand up, grabbing a few arepas in his other hand. Both circle each other. You're, you're, you're one of them now. <laughs> I'm embracing the future of the human race. You, my friend, are late as usual. Instead of securing your place in the world, you sit there pontificating, never seeing your own hypocrisy. You say, those who choose to transform, they choose to indulge in their most basic instincts. What, what, what were you doing, huh? What were you doing when you forced me to come to this cafe? What were you doing when, when you were trying to, to convince the waitress to, to, to act in your show, just so that you can fulfill your basic urge to fuck? You're the animal here. You're just too afraid to admit it. The last disgusting human. And you're furious. You hate that people have caught on to your game and improved on it. You become irrelevant overnight. Humanity does not become irrelevant. But soon it will be. 
Bernardo throws an arepa at Juan. Juan stands there stunned before roaring out, greatly offended by the insult. Bernardo stuffs the butter knife in his pocket before grabbing as many arepas as he can before trying to escape. He's a hippo! Oh my god! He's one of them now! As Bernardo tries to escape, a large brown something is flung on stage. It either hits or lands near Bernardo. It depends on the night. A brown fog fills the stage. Bernardo sniffs before retching. What is that? Is that, is that the, 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 no! The sound of roars and grunts all around. Hippo sapiens enter from where Bernardo tried to escape, while Juan advances on Bernardo from the opposite end. In the world of yesterday, I was the friend of an imposter who called himself an artist. But in the world of tomorrow, I will be a general. I will be the king among hippos. <laughs> Leader, I will be everything people will do as I say. I will be the powerful one. Come here, old friend. We shall make an example out of you. <laughs> Death to the takers. Death to the parasites and the mucha class. I'm surrounded. No, 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 fuck. A cannon goes off. The hippo sapiens look around in panic. Another cannon. Juan and the hippo sapiens begin to retreat. As they exit, another cannon goes off again, shaking the stage. Wild cries and grunts fill the air. Juan enters, covered in soot, hit. Juan. Bernardo rushes to Juan and cradles his head. I know, I know, I know. I love you too. <laughs> No, 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 no. I forgive you. you. You weren't in the right mind. Hi. I hate you! Juan dies. No! Another cannon goes off. Bernardo looks off in the direction of the cannon fire. He gently lays Juan down and places an arepa over Juan's heart before crossing his hands over his chest. Bernardo exits. Scene eight. <laughs> Scene eight. The Hippocalypse. The destroyed assembly hall. On one side, Dahlia stands on a raised platform with a colony era cannon and three cannonballs. On the other, several hippo sapiens grunting and roaring at Dahlia. Dahlia stands tall, a pistol holstered to her side, boldly facing the hippo menace. She fires a cannon. The hippo sapiens fall. That's fucking right. Come on, you fucking traitors to humanity. Every single one of you. Dahlia loads one of her cannonballs and fires again. The ground shakes. Bernardo enters on Dahlia's side, carrying an armful of arepas. Dahlia! Dahlia, there you are. Dahlia brandishes her pistol and points it at Bernardo. Get the fuck back. It's Bernardo. me. Dahlia, it's me. I know exactly who the fuck you are. <laughs> I, I'm not. Sm smile for me. Smile for me. Right now. Show me your teeth. Uh-huh. Bernardo smiles awkwardly, revealing no hippo teeth. Dahlia still considers shooting him anyway. <laughs> but then, a hippo sapien rises from the ground and rushes at Dahlia, trying to capitalize on her uh, distraction. But Dahlia, supremely aware of her surroundings, turns on the enemy and immediately shoots the hippo sapien, who howls and retreats off stage. Bernardo gets on the platform and drops the arepas by the cannon. We have to get out of here. I refuse. Do you even know how to use that thing? Dahlia oh. points her pistol at Bernardo, oh, tired I of his bullshit. I will shoot you right the fuck now. Okay, okay. Sorry for questioning. Dahlia turns to face the other side and fires the cannon again. Coward! Come out! Come out here! What are you doing? I want him. The first hippo. Escobar's hippo. We don't know if it was one of Escobar's original. Dahlia fires a warning shot at Bernardo. No more splitting hairs and no more petty debate. Dahlia! I will never forgive you. I could have been there. I could have helped before they changed. I could have convinced them to stay human, but, <laughs> but no, I wasted my time with you at that fucking drug lord's home looking for birth certificates. Dahlia! How the fuck do you know my name? How, how could I not know the name of the woman I care for? I never told you my name. Well, uh, see, so you see, uh -huh. the... Oh my God, you fucking stalker. You fucking disgusting creep. 
no, 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 no. Juan turned into a hippo person, and then I... Close the cannon! How, how, how do I do that? Oh, idiot. Move! Valia shows Bernardo out of the way and picks up a cannonball. I love a woo who takes control. What the fuck is wrong with you? Valia drops a cannonball, which rolls away. Um, you lost the... I will never, the... I will never, ever have an ounce of feeling for you, and you're perverted! <laughs> what the fuck is that? Hippos have booty fans that make their shit into mist! That's not fucking real! No, it's seriously! <laughs> the rhythmic stomping and hippo grunt chant ceases. A long silence, a low rumble. Escobar's hippo, the entire body enters. He is even more immense than previously. It wears a military beret and moves about with the pomp and self-aggrandizing swagger of a general or a Latin American dictator. Its ears spin and its eyes like onyx. Hippo noises fill the stage. The chanting resumes as Escobar's hippo opens its massive mouth and lets out a piercing roar. It wasn't that big before. It's only been one day. It's the last day, fucking Finally. <coughs> ah, fuck you too. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah? Huh? Ah, we'll see how you like this. Dahlia gets the last cannonball and loads it into the cannon. What are you doing? Dahlia tries to fire the cannon. Nothing. She tries again. Nothing. Dolly gets her pistol and begins firing madly at Escobar's hippo. All shots miss. Why? Escobar's hippo begins to advance toward Dalia and Bernardo. We have to go. No, I won't leave. It's not cowardly to retreat. Come on. The hippos win if we retreat. We have to look at things as if it's the worst case scenario. We don't know if this is global. We could possibly be the last two humans on Earth. This hits Dalia hard like a ton of bricks. She seriously hadn't thought of it. They might actually be the last two humans on Earth. The last two? Escobar's hippo also stops and tilts its head, wondering about that idea. Mm -hmm. The last two humans? Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we have to prepare. Prepare for, for what? Strategies to fight back. Shelter, food, eventually. Procreation and, um, repopulation of the human race. This is the straw that broke Dalia's back. She tries to make sense of all the emotions running through her mind, and her emotions are all over, all over the place until the idea of Bernardo's lovemaking sinks into her mind's eyes. Nope. Fuck that shit. <laughs> she looks at Bernardo and smiles at him. Um, I can't. Not, not with you. We have a duty to save the human race. Why, you know, you know, fuck the human race. That's what we're going to try to do. <laughs> fuck the human race back into existence. No, 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 I won't. Uh, no, I won't. Simple as that. I what, can't. What have you been fighting for all this time then? Look I, look, I am willing to die for humanity, but I will not procreate with you to save humanity. No, fuck that. In time, you'll learn to love me. I need you to understand something. Okay. I mean this unambiguously. I'm not flirting or playing hard to get when I say this, you know. Um, I would rather fuck the hippo. <laughs> Bernardo squeaks, heartbroken. Escobar's hippo, meanwhile, is totally down for this and gives an enthusiastic grunt of, of approval. You, you had seriously fuck a hippo before? Yes, yes, without hesitation. I cannot believe it. Oh, I'll believe it. <laughs> now, we gotta find a way out. So, do you have any kind of weapon? A knife? A gun? Anything? Uh, Just... I have this butter knife from the cafe. Oh my god, it never ends. How disappointing you are. She snatches the butter knife from Bernardo and turns to face Escobar's hippo. The hippo's ears spin and it tilts its head, wondering what Dahlia will do. Then Dahlia rushes at Escobar's hippo. Better 
to die with my pride than in humiliation. The hippo ah! sapiens on the floor rise and they meet Dahlia before she can reach Escobar's hippo. She cries out, but the scream is cut short by the hippo sapiens surrounding her. They raise Dahlia's dead body, covered in scratches like it's a trophy. Celebration as Bernardo falls to his knees and the hippo sapiens depart. <laughs> The love of my life! Why? <laughs> That's not a response. You need to answer for yourself. Why? <laughs> Why this town? Why didn't you stay in Hacienda Napolis where Escobar brought you? Why can people change into hippos? What about your ideology seduces so many people? Ah. Uh, where I felt, you say. That to assume there's an ideology in the first place, that's, that's the fatal flaw of my thinking? Of course, yes. Yes. But, 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 but why do people rally around you? You you and all those like you inevitably fail. People who bring about destruction and chaos always fail. <sighs> it doesn't matter. What do you mean it doesn't matter? Of course it matters. I'm, Unless you mean that the ideology doesn't die with the man, that, that it persists in memory until it rises again, then, then, then why fight then? Why, why do we do anything at all? If, if we eradicated the Nazis and the communists, the drug lords and the strongmen, then they'll just return. What kind of existence is this? It's absurd. <laughs> of course, the poor will always be poor. Rich would always be rich. We are trapped in the eternal repetition of history, but, but the arc of history inevitably bends towards justice. It does. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. Unless it's a wheel and, and the bend to justice leads to the descent into the worst moment of human history. But then, but, but then what are you, hippo? What are you to the eternal turning of the wheel? You, you will perish along with all others into another like you rises. Like the man who brought you here, but rising only to be destroyed and eventually forgot. <laughs> but you're not here as history's pawn. You say you come to break the wheel. By changing the fundamental nature of man to hippo, they will break free then. then then one was correct. To transform into a hippo is to rage against cruelty of repeating faith. It's, it's to go against human destiny and truly to free oneself. Then, then, then I should be, turn into a hippo. Yes, I should. <sighs> Bernardo closes his eyes, trying to will himself into a state of hipponess. He waits there, holding his breath, growing red in the face until I can't. <laughs> Shut up! I can't let go of this humanity. I can't accept that this is the solution to breaking the wheel. Freedom cannot, cannot come at the expense of basic decency. I can't, it can't. It can't come from following a hippo brought here by an egomaniac who killed so many people and couldn't be removed by a government that killed even more people. You're too pathetic! Escobar's hippo has grown bored with this. He opens his mouth and roars the mightiest roar yet. Uh, so we, it won't change. You're, you're gonna eliminate me. That makes sense. But one last question. Why do you hate Arepa so much? Bernardo grabs an Arepa and hurls it at Escobar's hippo. This greatly offends the hippo for the last time. <laughs> Bernardo throws another Arepa after Arepa at Escobar's hippo, driving it back. Ah, because it represents that one thing your ideology can never offer. Because that Arepa is the foundation of our triumph over nature. Because it sustains and feeds. Because it is the human spirit and all our ingenuity in one flaky, sometimes dryly made up patty? I know 
what I am. I'm no great human. Monsters like you destroy our smartest and bravest and leave cowards like me behind, but even a coward has his moment of bravery. When we protect we protect our skin at all costs. The coward will use his courage if he must. You killed Juan and Dahlia, the smartest and bravest. You took this town over down to its political infrastructure. You took this town and its people under your sway. You intend to dominate and transform or to kill everybody until you achieve permanent change. But I'm still here. You won't win until you have killed me. The human spirit endures as long as I'm here. <laughs> yes, yes, laugh, laugh. Laugh at me, I'm worthless. I can't write worth a damn. I'm, I'm egotistical and have always acted in my own self-interest. You won't run away from me. You won't run away from you. I did, I did nothing to try to stop you until it was too late, but I am here now. That counts for something, right? I'm still human. <laughs> it may be true that Colombian men have a grand propensity for failure, but I won't let you win this one easy. If I'm the last man, then I shall defend humanity to the last breath. Even if I fail in my task, I will keep on. Bernardo sees there's only one arepa left. The hippo sapiens enter and begin a march toward Bernardo, following behind Escobar's hippo. <laughs> or, or you're just a hippo that doesn't like things being thrown at them. And you have no other meaning beyond that. And I'm just trying to intellectualize something because he makes me feel special. Bernardo, Escobar's hippo prepares to rush at Bernardo. Oh, oh so this is how it ends. <laughs> Last question, last question. Were you born in Colombia or Africa? It will really help me solve something here. Escobar's hippo is caught off guard and is confused for a moment before. I see now. It's not an immigration problem. You're just a vulgar animal surrounded by stupid people. Escobar's hippo. And patience has officially run out. It rushes towards Bernardo, who himself yells out, holding the arepa above his head like a spear. As they're about to crash, blackout. End of play. <laughs>